my channel, you guys. I'm so excited for today's mukbang. We are back in the studio. We are having one of my favorite growing up, growing up, wow, Kim, great English, childhood um, meals, I guess. Every time my mom would make me um, chicken or duck porridge, she would always save me like half and I would just sit there and just pull the meat apart and I would dip it in her Vietnamese um, fish sauce or we would do Mui Up Jan. It is a childhood favorite of mine. And so today, I figure we could have that for dinner. It's probably something I haven't shared with you guys and I am always uh, excited to share with you my culture and also childhood meals. But before we get started, I know you guys, oh my god, I don't know why that came out weird. I know you guys have been loving this game that I bought on Amazon. I know we do this all the time whenever Michelle's on the channel, but I figured today we would pull out three cards and answer them throughout the video. If you guys are interested, I'll link this down below. It's called Convo, Convo and Chill. 99 controversial conversa conversation cards. Carlos and I have like a collection of games. Uh, we love having game nights. And it's kind of been sad because in 2020, we didn't really have any except with Michelle. We love hosting like his friends over and then my friends over. We love playing it with our friends and family during Christmas time and all the holidays. So I'm going to pull out three cards randomly and then we'll sit them aside and we can start eating. So I won't look at them. Hopefully we didn't already answer them. I know that I've gone through a few of these already in previous videos. I also want to take this time and thank you guys, honestly, for the love and support. I've been very MIA in February, and I wanted to um, acknowledge that and talk about that for a few seconds before we start eating. I took a few days off in February. Um, if you guys are big supporters of the Mukbang channel, then you know that I've been very consistent on my other channel where I post pretty much daily vlogs from Sunday to Thursday. I have been really enjoying that. And then for the Mukbang channel, I've been taking a little bit of a step back and I just wanted to take this moment and thank you, you guys, for completely understanding and being so patient for, with me in the month of February. I purposely took a step away from posting a lot of Mukbangs. If you guys have noticed, I think I've posted like seven Mukbangs in the month of February. And nothing happens. There's nothing bad that's going on. I just really took your advice and I really wanted to have some me time. Uh, focus on enjoying this new house. I felt like I didn't really have to have, I didn't really have a moment where I could enjoy the new house. And then also, there's a lot of things, very good things that are going on in the side and a lot of projects and so I didn't want to overwhelm myself and I think if anything 2020 has taught us to put ourselves first and really take a lot of me time. I think me time is really good. I am somebody that works a lot. I like working. I like always doing something and I don't take time to be away from work and not worry about that. And that is something that I'm trying to work on in 2021 is have more me time and realize that it's okay to not always be working, that life is so short and um, you know, you just never know. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for being patient and understanding and I'm excited to come back. I feel fresh, I feel like I could breathe, I feel good. So. March will be a very good month. I have really, really fun mukbangs lined up for you guys. So thank you so much for understanding. And I'm going to pull out three cards. I'm going to have them laying up because my hands will probably get dirty. Um, let's see. Ooh, these are juicy. I kind of want to save these for like when Michelle is in the video. Okay, so I pulled out three. I only took two away because uh, they were like kind of like funny sexual questions. I think it's kind of weird to answer that alone. I feel like not weird, but it'll be more fun to answer when Michelle's here. You guys should definitely buy this. It's so good. Anywho, uh, let me go wash my hands and then we will dig into this chicken. Okay, you guys, I'm so excited. 
to drink today. We just have good old ice cold water. We also have cucumber and uh, romaine lettuce on the side here. I did not fart. That was my foot. If you guys hear that, I did not fart. So this is just a whole uh, chicken boiled with a little bit of muy ug. Um, it's kind of like rotisserie chicken. That's the best that I can explain it to you guys. Rotisserie, the rotisserie chicken is seasoned and then put in the oven. This one is just boiled and it tastes so good. I'm gonna start right here with the chicken feet. Chicken feet's my favorite. Bon appetit, you guys. I hope you guys are eating something awesome. Leave a comment down below, let me know what it is. Mmm. Reminds me of my mom. Mmm. Okay. Also, this sauce right here, this, okay, so in the Vietnamese culture, we have a sauce that is very popular throughout the whole culture that we use to put on broken rice, we use to dip our spring rolls in, and it's called nuk mang jam, which is basically um, dipping fishing sauce. And so in the culture, everybody kind of does it differently. But pretty much the base of it is the same. So I just wanted to put that out there. I did not invent the sauce, uh, but it's absolutely delicious. I think everybody just kind of does it with their own um, style and they mix different things to uh, taste the way that they want it to taste. But I absolutely love the way that mine turned out. I just have to figure out the measurements and then I will share it with you guys. But it's so good. Mmm. I'm not much of a dipper, you guys know that, but I love the sauce. It has um, basically everything that you need to make fish sauce. So that's um, garlic, chil Thai chili, um, lime, nuk mum, which is the dark fish sauce, water, and then I added cilantro in there. I really like it with the cilantro. And then I also add the chili garlic sauce. Mmm. So good. I will share this recipe with you if you're interested in trying at home. I think tomorrow or the day after. Okay. Ooh. I feel like I should move this sauce before something super bad happens, right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. You guys wings or are you guys about the drums? I'm all about the wings. Uh, in the Vietnamese culture, uh, people eat a lot of this in the countryside. I always ate this going to uh, my mom's hometown because she grew up in the country. Oh my god. The cartilage is so good. Some cucumbers. Scoop all that cilantro. Do you guys eat duck? Duck is also just as good.
Mm. Gotta clean those bones, you guys. Mm. I got a few comments in my recent video asking me why I don't use the jump sauce anymore. If you guys remember, I think like six, seven months ago, like last summer, I discovered the sauce called Jum. They actually reached out to me, such nice people, like very inspiring, motivating, but mostly inspiring because it's women owned and I just love that, seeing women chase their dreams and create something by just having a simple idea. The reason that I don't really use their sauce anymore is because ever since we moved here, I've been cooking a lot more and experimenting in the kitchen. So I kind of created a sauce that I really like and satisfies me. And I also like the fact that I get to make this fresh and it doesn't come out of the bottle. But if you guys don't want to make this at home, either you don't have the ingredients or you're just too lazy, completely okay. You guys should definitely check out the Jum sauce. It's so good and very, very fresh. I will... um. I will post their website down below if you guys are interested. But yeah, ever since I moved into this house, I've just been like experimenting and having this huge desire to cook. It's probably because I'm in love with the new kitchen. But, oh, this sauce that I made is so good, you guys. I can't wait to share it with you guys. It's so easy. And um, I just love sharing a little bit of my culture with you. I'm gonna go in with this part. Ooh, look at all that meat. Mmm. Oh, wow. So fresh. That's what I love about making the sauce at home. So fresh. It tastes so good. Mmm. This chicken is amazing. I love chicken feet. I feel like the Vietnamese culture is very close to the Filipino culture. I feel like we eat very similar things. I always watch like Filipino mukbangs and I'm like salivating. I think the hardest thing for me lately because I've been cooking more and being in the kitchen is sharing recipes with you guys because I don't really use measuring uh, spoons. I kind of just like follow my heart. So if you guys want to replicate it at home, then I have to measure it out exactly because I don't want you guys to eat it at home and be like, this is disgusting, Kim, you know? I want it to taste exactly the way it tastes for me.
I'm very excited. I probably won't finish this whole uh, chicken, so I'm going to save the rest and make chicken noodle soup. Or I can make porridge too. We do have more rice. Mmm. The sauce makes it so much better. Oh my god, ice cold water. Tastes so good. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. I love that sound. That means there's cartilage. Ooh, look at that, you guys. I know. <gasps> I know this is what you guys have been waiting for. You're like, Kim, stop peeling. Stop putting it all in your mouth. Okay, bon appetitis. Oh my god, I'm pissed. That shit was good. Mm. The wing is definitely my favorite, or like flats.
Oh my god. When a sauce is good, do you ever just want to dip so you can suck the sauce? You technically don't even need to eat anything. At this point, I would honestly just dip my finger. Ooh. I want to leave all of the meat part, like the parts, like this part right here where it's like just all chicken meat to make the chicken noodle soup. Mm. This is the neck. Excuse me. The neck is very, very good. It's probably one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my. This sauce is good. I like it better than the the normal the normal fish sauce I make. I love um, the parts in the chicken where it's just like a lot of cartilage and not a lot of meat. Is that weird? I know people eat the I people eat chicken for the meat. Not me. one's hard. That one is hard to break off. Oh, there we go. Mm. Okay. Let's answer some questions. Let's answer the first one. If you're leaving a party, what song will make you run back to the dance floor? Oh, okay. Well, first of all, you will not find me on the dance floor unless I am drunk. <laughs> I am actually, I'm actually an introvert. I may seem like an extrovert and like super outgoing, which I am in certain circumstances. But for the most part, for the most part, I am an introvert, so I'm extremely shy. Unless you get some alcohol into me, then I can like have a really, really good time. I am one of those people. Ooh, look at all the cilantro. Mmm. I don't really have a song that I can think of. Just because there are so many, and I personally don't know titles of songs. I am that, I'm that person. I can't remember lyrics until like 10 years later, when I've heard the song like a million times. And I don't know song titles. And I really don't know celebrities. That's really not my expertise. What are your thoughts on the general three-month rule before having sex with someone uh, you're dating? So, that didn't happen with Carlos and I. <laughs> I've heard about this three month rule and the reason that I heard about this three month rule is um, I think there's a movie, I forgot what it's called, Date Date Like a Man or something, right? Um, I believe it's a Tyler Perry movie but I could be so wrong. By the way, Tyler Perry movies, the absolute best movies, they're my favorite. If you ever want to make me happy, just turn on a Tyler Perry movie and I am there. I love, love, love his movies. Um, but the three month rule I heard, I learned about it from that movie. I think I'm pretty, I'm like 90% sure it's called Think Like a Man. 
How do I feel about that? I feel like sex is such a personal decision. Um, it's how you feel as an individual and it's how the other person feels as well. I don't really think there should be any rule to it. Um, it's your standards and what you want and I feel like the right person will be comfortable with exactly whatever you set your mind to. So if you don't, aren't comfortable yet and it's not going to happen, then it shouldn't happen. You should never feel pressured or feel forced to do something that you're not happy with. Um, and I feel like women, as us females, we tend to have this three month rule because we're like, oh, you know, we don't want to give up the, the JJ too fast. But at the same time, why, like, why have rules, I guess? Like, kind of, what if you just kind of let love do its thing and go with the flow? And, I, you know, as I'm saying that, I'm like, there are gonna be circumstances where you're gonna get hurt and you're gonna hook up with a guy that led you on and you're gonna get hurt, but I feel like that's just part of love and part of learning about things. I mean, dating, liking someone, and love, those are all risky freaking things. Like, nothing is really guaranteed. So, um, I've never done the three month rule. Let me know if you guys have. Um, you know, if you're horny, then you're horny. <laughs> Next question is, if your partner has never posted any pictures of you on social media, do you consider that a red flag? For me, it's like, how long have y'all been dating, right? Like, if you guys have been dating for like a few days or like a week, then it mm, doesn't really bug me. But if it's like Carl's and I, where we've been dating for three years, going on four years this November, and we're engaged, and he's never posted one photo, I wouldn't say like a red flag. It would be like, it would be, it wouldn't be like a red flag. It would be like an orange flag. Like we're kind of getting there, but we're not like gonna be super pissed yet, but we're kind of getting there. I would actually be more curious. Um, there has to be a conversation behind that. Now, if you're like dating someone, I'm trying to put myself, whenever I answer questions, I'm trying to put myself in every single situation possible. Okay, if I'm dating someone like in high school and we've been dating for like, ah, oh, you know what? My mind's all over the place on this one question. Because I feel like if you know, then you know, right? If he has made it very clear in public that you guys are dating and he maybe he's just not a social media person. Like Carlos really is never on social media. He really posts like once or twice a month. Uh, he uses Instagram to talk to his friends because they have like, multiple group chats going on. Um, maybe one, he's not a social media person or he's just not into it. But I think that if you are in such a comfortable relationship like that and you asked him, he would probably post. Like sometimes it's just a genuine, like I didn't really know that it bothered you kind of thing. But um, yeah, I just, I wouldn't say it's a red flag. I think it'd be like an orange flag. It's definitely something I would just talk to him and bring it up about. Those are good questions. I really, I've never gotten a bad question in this deck. You guys should really check it out and uh, get it on Amazon. I think it's really good to have in your collection for like game nights. Mm. Sorry, I'm thirsty today. Okay, back to our chicken. Honestly, at this point, I just want something so I can like dip. Ooh. I don't know if I want lettuce or get all that goodness, you guys. You see that? Mmm. Ooh, okay, I love this part because it's not too much meat. I realized that I don't have onions or celery. I have carrots to make the chicken noodle. I think I'm gonna shed the chicken tonight and put it in the fridge.
Mm. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, there we go. Should have brought a knife. Is it chicken where they have the wishbone? It's called wishbone. It's like, um, it's that bone and then you and the other person will split it and if it's like in the middle, it's like good luck or something. Is that in the chicken? Why do I feel like it's in a freaking turkey? No, it's in a chicken. It's in a chicken, huh? This part is mostly bone. I low-key love shredding chicken. It's one of my favorite things to do in the kitchen. I don't know why, don't ask. I think I just like, I like eating and like working with my hands, you know? I know you guys are probably like, Kim, just eat the damn chicken, but I'm trying to save all of the parts with a lot of meat for the chicken noodle soup. Actually, I don't even know if I have enough for chicken noodle soup. We might have to do like a chicken salad, like a chicken Caesar salad would be good. I kind of am craving a chicken Caesar salad. Like this side has so much meat. Look at all of that meat, right? People pay good money for that. This was a good chicken. I'm impressed. I found it at the Asian market. I saw it and I automatically was like, oh my god, I have to do a mukbang because I've never done it before. I think I've done rotisserie chicken, but not boiled chicken like this. So good. Oh, come on. Oh my God. Mm. I'm not kidding. This sauce with seafood. I gotta do that this week.
honestly scooping all that garlic and cilantro. Okay, I think this is going to be my last bite. Oh my god. That was gorgeous. Alrighty, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. This sauce is absolutely bomb. I am going to keep doing it and find the exact measurements that will get you the exact same taste that I am tasting right now. Like I said earlier in the video, it's so hard for me to whip things up in the kitchen because I need to start using um, measuring spoons, to be honest, because I want to share what I make in my kitchen with you guys at home so you can um, replicate it. But I need to find the exact measurement so it tastes exactly the way that I'm tasting it right now. But this is so good, good and so simple to make. There are so many recipes on Google. If you type in Vietnamese fish sauce for dipping, you will get so many recipes. It's a very popular sauce in our culture. We put it on everything, you guys. You either put it on something or you're using it to dip. It's absolutely delicious. I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Do not forget to leave a comment down below. Either answer any of the questions because I want to hear from you guys or leave any comment that you want, or maybe you guys have a question for the next mukbang. Don't forget to subscribe to my Eat With Kim channel, and then subscribe to my Kim Thai channel, where Carlos and I post vlogs Sunday to Thursday. We have been having so much fun with the vlogs, and you guys get to see the rest of the house. I feel like on the mukbang channel, you only get to see the kitchen and the studio. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support, and thank you for understanding um, that February I just needed time away and to relax and focus on other things. But I'm excited to be back, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well. Keep in contact. I love talking to you guys in the Instagram messages, so head over there and follow me there. I will see you guys back here tomorrow with a brand new video. I'll see you tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Bye, my loves.